now I'm going to pour into two separate cups and we're going to pour the cups together where the paint flows down and mixes almost like a waterfall in a way onto the canvas. So we mix the paints on top of each other in each of the cups doing different methods basically. Let's start filling our cups up. That is cup number one. Put that aside and let's go for number two. And I want this one to be different than the first one. I still have more mixed over there. Dark blue. Add a little more of this coral to the top of it. I add black on top of that. This is our second cup. Looks like it's heavy on the white down there, doesn't it? Hmm. That's the white part's gonna come out on top on both of them. We'll see. Should be uh, very interesting. Right. Put my paints to the side. I might need them again in a second. Put these off to the side as well. Let's bring this canvas in. I have it on thumbtacks to keep it raised from the top of the table. Let's do it. So in having this extra paint on the bottom of this really, really helps with the rest of the paint to start flowing easily whenever we pour it all onto the canvas. It gives it something, gives it something to, I guess, hold on to in a way or to not hold on to. Because if it's just a dry canvas, then the paint sticks to it a lot more and like folds on itself. and. You know, it does things that you probably don't want it to do uh, while you're tilting and turning your canvas. So this way, it really, really helps avoid that. mixed in not that it really matters too much but it's nice to it's nice to have a clean color on each side I 
put the pallet knife with my popsicle sticks, let it soak in the water instead of letting all that paint dry on it. And now, and now we pour. See how the paint down here is already flowing really well with it? That just means all the paint on top is going to flow so much better with this paint down here. So while it settles a little bit, I'm gonna take my torch and give it a little texture and pop the bubbles while I'm at it. Now we tilt, turn, twist, whatever you feel like doing, go for it. I don't even know where to start with this. That cashew color comes through so beautifully with that blue. I love it. And while you want to make sure you cover every single one of your corners, you also don't want to let all of your paint roll off in the process, you know? Like right here, I was gonna let it keep going, but I would have lost all of that. And I, did, I didn't want to. I didn't want that to disappear. But now that I brought it back a little bit, I'm thinking maybe I can, I can slide it down a little bit no, I'm, I'm gonna lose too much of what I want. So when that happens, let's see if I can find a place to put this. 
when that happens, if you add if you add paint to the edge of it, it'll give it a little more to to let drip down with it, basically, uh, instead of losing all this other paint over here. Oh, that cashew and blue looks so good together. Let's clean off our palette knife. And steal some of these colors from down here. And now make sure to look around the rest of your canvas and make sure there's no white parts showing. As well as getting level with it and making sure there are no... You want, you want to make sure there's no uh, random pieces or gunks or, or chunks in your paint. And I really like getting down eye level with it see how flat it is. If you see any humps, you'll know that you need to, you'll take your palette knife and pull it out very, very gently. Um, I'm really happy with this. There are no chunks on it. There are no lumps anywhere. Uh, now I need to check the sides, make sure those are good. Well, I do see one little lump. I'm going to attempt to remove it. It's hardly noticeable which always scares me to try to remove. spot on this edge right here so find that color paint and dab it on that's not really that color paint it's hard to tell sometimes What you want to do is take the bottom of it, slide your finger across, and this will help with all the drips that you're going to get later on while the canvas is drying. Instead of them drip dripping everywhere, you're kind of you're kind of tapering it off in a way.
slide this up there. And this is another reason you want those thumbtacks underneath because if you didn't have the thumbtacks, all of this paint would be rubbing up against it. You wouldn't have, you wouldn't have that separation from the two and you really need that separation. Um, it, it took me, it took me about a month to figure out the thumbtack, um, technique. And I, I had to, I had to figure something out because I was like, my canvases kept sticking to all the surfaces I was putting them on and it would ruin the bottom of them. Not anymore, because I use thumbtacks. All right, and now take our torch and pop any remaining bubbles and give this top part just a little more texture. You want to make sure that you don't hold the torch in one spot for too long because then it'll really start to toast and, and ruin your paint. So I, I like to I like to give it a flick of the wrist while I'm moving it. It makes me feel better about not staying in one spot too long. And we are pretty much done. All you have to do now is let it drip, drop, dry, and you have wall art. Oh, and don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more acrylic vibes. See you next time.